Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program, God wants us to sow indiscriminately too. He wants us to fling his word broadly so that it can reach as many people as possible. It's telling us that God is an extravagant sower and we should be too. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning. I'm Pastor Glenn Emery from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Osmond, Nebraska. Welcome to our service today. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is written in Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Romans in chapter 8, we begin to read in verse 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. 
But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him, so he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from St. Matthew chapter 13, the gospel lesson which was read just a moment ago. Dear friends in Christ, waste not, want not. This is a proverbial phrase that appeared in literature in the late 1700s. It obviously means if you do not waste anything, you will never be in want. As a reader or hearer today, this phrase makes sense to me, but it makes even more sense to those who came through hard times, such as the 1930s when the Great Depression happened. Many people lost everything they had, including their livelihood. They were forced to make or grow their own resources, and because those resources were hard to come by, they were very conscious not to waste anything. Perhaps today we have things too easy. We take things for granted and we aren't as careful about wasting things as we ought to be. One group of people that are very conscious about not wasting things is our farmers. I was amazed to learn as I prepared this message that today's farmers don't just put kernels of corn or soybean seeds in planter boxes and drive away. No, instead they have actually calculated that it will take about 32,000 kernels of corn to plant one acre of ground. And it will take about 140,000 soybean seeds to plant one acre of ground. Farmers have meticulously determined that if they plant their rows 30 inches apart, it will take this many kernels or seeds. Then, in today's world of technology, they have set their GPS to make sure they can get the maximum number of rows in their field. All of this shows us that the farmer is going to make the best use of the resources he has available, and he is not going to waste any of them. Today's farmer is trying to maximize his yield. That's how he makes his profit and provides for his family. On average, a soybean field yielding 55 bushels per acre results in a 66-fold increase in his planting. On average, a corn field yielding 210 bushels per acre results in a 590-fold increase. It is easy to see that the farmer has made every effort to glean an efficient and successful harvest. Back in Bible times, a sower would not expect these kinds of returns. In our text, we see that successful harvest could be as much as 30, 60, or 100 fold. Considering the ancient methods used in farming back in that day, one can understand how these results would be considered good. But the sower in Bible times was not nearly as discriminate in his sowing as our modern day farmer is today. We see that his method of sowing was to reach in a cloth bag hung from his waist, grab a handful of seeds, and broadcast them on the ground as he walked along. Using this method, we can see that much seed is wasted. Today's farmer would see their profits plummet if they use this method of sowing their seed. Today's farmer would surely think that the biblical sower was being very wasteful. Of course, in the parables of the Bible, of which this is one, they serve to teach the reader or hearer a valuable lesson. And this parable doesn't disappoint us. This parable makes a comparison of the sower sowing his seed across a broad swatch hoping that some of it will land on good soil and thus produce a crop, and today's Christian proclaiming the word of God to our world and praying that the sown word will cause people to become a follower of Christ. The word that we speak of is the old, old story of Jesus and his love. We hear in God's word, the Bible, that God created the world to be a beautiful and perfect place. When Adam and Eve sinned by not following God's commands, instead of desiring their death for their disobedience, God provided them with a Savior, his very own Son, Jesus Christ. 
God sent Jesus into our world so that he could suffer and die for the sins of everyone for all time. This is the consequence of our sin, what we deserve. But God put that consequence all on his son Jesus so that you and I get what we des don't get what we deserve, eternal death and destruction. Instead, Jesus stands before the throne of God and proclaims all who believe in him to be innocent, debt-free, because he paid the penalty for us. Because of his sacrifice, we live with him forever. Isn't that a great exchange? Now back to the story of the sower. As the biblical sower spreads his seed, some lands on the hard path, and before any of it has a chance to swell and sprout, birds come along and eat the seed. Still other seeds fall on the rocky ground, and while they may sprout and begin to grow, they don't have much soil from which to gather water and nutrients or to put down roots, so they wither and die. Other seeds fall among the thorns and weeds, which are more aggressive. They beat the good seedlings to the food from the ground, and so they choke the young plants and they die. And the last group of seeds from our parable fall on good ground, where they will grow, survive, and thrive. This is the group that multiplies 30, 60, or 100 fold. Today's Christian is also a sower. As he loves God and loves his neighbor as himself, he desires that other people hear the word of God and come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But because we are careful not to waste our resources, we try to determine the best method of sowing so as to get the best, most efficient results. And that's because we are results-driven people, and we want the biggest bang for our buck. Our churches and church leaders show this when we want to measure success by the number of people that are on our, are on our church rosters. But this isn't what God wants us to do. God wants us to determine success by the number of believers that are in our congregations. God tells us up front that even when we sow his word, it doesn't always produce the desired result. Just as none of us plant a tomato in our garden and hope for only one tomato, so we sow God's word in hopes that it will multiply the kingdom. We should persevere and not grow discouraged. Some who hear God's word have a hard heart. They don't have any desire to hear or learn God's word, and so even when it is proclaimed, they dismiss it as foolishness. It is a stumbling block that they cannot rationalize, so they don't even consider it. Some of God's word falls upon the person who, at first, listens to it and considers it of value, but the devil and our sinful nature are also competing for that person. Because that person's faith is young and not well-rooted, they win him over and that small interest that was first generated is lost and dies. Still other seed falls upon a person and he eagerly desires to let it take root in his life. All the while, the cares and concerns of this life are still present. Perhaps the cares are for family life, or the job, or the seduction of wealth, or the pleasure this life offers. All of these could overtake the plant of faith that has begun in this person. The newness and excitement of God's word quickly wears off and takes a back seat to the new way of life. And so that person goes back to the old ways of doing things. But some seeds of God's word find fertile soil in people's heart. They hear and learn God's word and are more excited than ever. They learn and understand that they are a sinner in need of a savior like Jesus. They are thirsty for Jesus' love and forgiveness. So they cultivate their heart to make it more receptive to what God teaches them. Their faith and love for Jesus grows and grows and eventually they too become sowers of the word. These are the results the biblical sower and today's sower hope for. But there's a difference. The biblical sower, if you recall, sowed indiscriminately, while today's sower doesn't. 
And that's an important lesson that God wants to teach us today. God wants us to sow indiscriminately too. He wants us to fling his word broadly so that it can reach as many people as possible. It's telling us that God is an extravagant sower and we should be too. Because you see, the ROI, the return on investment, which we are keen on today, isn't up to us. It's up to God. Our job is simple. Spread the word, sow the word. God will make it grow and mature. Of course, God wants all soil or all people to bear good fruit. But he also knows that this just isn't going to happen. People have a free will to decide for themselves who they will follow and what they will believe. We can't tell when a soil of a person's heart is good. That's not our concern. Too often we see the guy covered in tattoos and we eliminate him from consideration because, well, he must just be too wild for God's word. Or we see the young girl who's pregnant out of wedlock and we think she's done a shameful thing and not worthy of God's word. Or we see the old man stumble out of the bar again on Saturday night and we know that he's not going to be up for church on Sunday morning, so we don't waste the word on him. The blessing for us as sowers is that we have God's word and it is powerful. So that when we fling out his word, it is God who has the power to make it sprout and grow. All kinds of soil have potential because God is in charge. So then we sow God's word with reckless abandon. We don't worry about the ROI because God has promised us in Isaiah 55, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return empty, but will accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I said it. God's ROI happens in several ways. We may see an increase in people who become followers of Jesus, or people may deepen their faith as a result of our sowing. Both are acceptable and valuable for the church. Back in the late 700s, the Carolingian emperors, of whom Charlemagne was the most well-known, sent missionaries to the Saxons and Frisians in northern Germany. No one thought these wild savages from the east could be tamed. When Albert the Great, King of Wessex in what is today England, captured his Viking enemies in a trap, he baptized them instead of killing them. He then gave them a kingdom of their own. Everyone thought Albert to be mad, and yet it worked. Through those contacts, the Vikings of Scandinavia were eventually converted, and the Vikings and the Saxons of Germany would become the very heart of Lutheranism. Talk about sowing the seed with extravagance. Imagine the faith of Albert to even entertain the idea to tell those people about Jesus. Are we wasting seed today? Of course, good soil bears good fruit, but God can turn barren soil into a fertile field. His kingdom comes in mysterious ways that we cannot imagine, control, or manipulate. God calls us to tell others about the wonderful love of Jesus our Savior, to tell others that even when all hope seems lost, Jesus is there for us. And Jesus always offers us his forgiveness when we failed. You and I have a treasure in our heart given to us by the Holy Spirit, and he asks us to share that treasure with others. Let's sow his word with reckless abandon. Amen. And now to him who by the power working in us can do far, far more than we ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Main Street Living this morning. It is my hope you have been blessed by this presentation. If you are able to attend services, I would like to invite you to worship with us. If you are anywhere close to the Osmond, Nebraska area, please join us at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. The broadcast is dependent on the financial support of viewers like you. We need your help for this broadcast to continue. If you can help by sending a contribution of any amount to the address below. We would appreciate it. The website also has several ways in which to contribute, and it also contains much more information about this program and also links to other Lutheran Church Missouri Synod websites. Thank you again for joining us today, and have a blessed week this week. We will see you again next week at this time on this station.